We're back. Time for another edition of the Carolina Insider. Jones Angel, Adam Lucas here with you. Busy Tar Heel weekend to get our arms around. Make sure that you're caught up on all the action. Let's get to it. It's presented by our friends at Wells Fargo. And Adam, unfortunately, we have to start with a tough defeat, and that's on the women's basketball side of things. On the road, second round of the NCAA tournament. Man, a back and forth game with Ohio State in Columbus. Tar Heels hit a shot with right around 10 seconds left to tie it up, but Buckeyes hit another one a couple seconds later, end up winning it by two. Yeah, this was a really tough game. Tar Heels got in the hole, maybe missed some shots that they wish they would have made really close to the basket, but then just a furious rally in the final few minutes to eventually take the lead. But Ohio State's really good. That's why the Buckeyes were playing at home. They came back and made a game-winning play, and then the Tar Heels unable to score with 1.8 or two seconds left uh, in order to take the lead back. So Ohio State advances to the Sweet 16. Carolina done for the season, but a great core there of juniors and true freshmen who were a big deal in that game against Ohio State, all of whom we think are coming back. They were a part of Carolina beating St. John's in the first round of the NCAA tournament. That was Carolina's 50th NCAA tournament win in program history. Alyssa Usby, one of those juniors, seemed to be seniors, passed 1,000 career points in that game. She was the 40th Tar Heel to reach that mark. So a lot of positives for the Tar Heels, but they certainly wish they were moving on to Seattle this coming weekend. So Tar Heels fall a little short of their ultimate goal, of course, of a national championship. But Adam, some really cool news that there were some other Tar Heels that were able to achieve that ultimate goal here in the last couple days. Let's start on the swimming and diving side of things. Junior Aranza Vasquez, Adam, not just one national title, she takes home two as the individual national champion in the one meter and three meter springboard competitions at the NCAA championship. She is the first Carolina diver ever to win a title. She is the seventh individual female to win a national championship in Carolina's history and not just once, but twice. On back to back days. You saw the first news and you thought, oh, that's good, Aranza, congratulations. She's been here on the video pod. That's great, she won a national championship. Take a couple hours of sleep, come back, do it again the next day. <laughs> we'll get the chance to talk to her later this week on the audio pod. Looking forward to hearing more from her about her experience. Now being a two-time national champion for the Tar Heels. First Tar Heel ever, as Jen said, to win a diving title. She was not the only individual, though, as far as swimming and diving, to find success. Grace County, first team All-America in the 50 free. She was also first team All-America with the 200 medley relay team. Her teammates Greer Patson, uh, Patterson, excuse me, Skylar Smith, and Ellie Van Note. County Earls also earned second team All-America and five other events. So 21 first or second team All-American nods. Tar Heels finished 10th, first top 10 since 2001. So again, a program we've talked some about swimming and diving slowly. And ACC is really competitive. Uh, Virginia and NC State in particular on the women's side, very, very good. But the Tar Heels are slowly climbing their way, getting in uh, to that national conversation. So congratulations to all the individuals and relay teams that had success in this past weekend. Adam also, and we're going to talk to this gentleman uh, tomorrow here on the video pod, another national title for Austin O'Connor. He wins his second national championship as an individual. He won two years ago at 149 pounds, now competing at 157 and takes home yet another national title. Does it two years apart, just an incredible achievement. He's the second Tar Heel to win t multiple NCAA titles. TJ Jaworski was the other, and I think you'll enjoy hearing more from Austin later this week about how he did it and some of the challenges he faced to get there and what it's like to walk out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and everybody wants to beat you because you already are a champion, and then you go out and do it again. Uh, but not the only Tar Heel wrestler who had success out in Tulsa. O'Connor is a five-time All-America. Lachlan McNeil finished fourth at 141 pounds. And then Gavin Kane, eighth at 184. So they also get All-America honors in addition to Austin. Tar Heels overall had a great meet. They finished 12th, their best finish since 1995. So head coach Coleman Scott, as yep. we've mentioned, had him on here before, doing great things with Tar Heel wrestling. So again, congratulations to all of those individuals finishing up their competition seasons and doing so with a high level of success. All right, let's get to some teams that are right in the middle of their seasons now. We'll start with baseball. 
Boy, a tough weekend for the Tar Heels, not because they didn't have success. They just weren't able to play very much. They went up to Pittsburgh, and the weather was so poor, the two teams were only able to actually play one of the three scheduled games. The Tar Heels made the most of it, though, hit six home runs in the one game, defeating Pitt 17-7. Connor Bovaire had five shutout innings in relief. That was a game that started on one day, I believe Friday, and then finished actually on Saturday. So it, it was just a tough weekend to get in any action. Also a tough weekend to get the ball over the wall if Vance Honeycutt is involved. Adam, what a catch by Vance Honeycutt here for the Tar Heels. Let's take a look as Late in the game, there you see Carolina's got a pretty good lead, but this is robbery. That's one of the best home run robbery catches I've ever seen. And he does it wearing a hoodie, which I think makes it just a, a little higher degree of difficulty. Sometimes you see one of those catches and you think, was that going to be a home run? That was a home run. And then Vance Honeycutt went, jumped, brought it back from over the fence, held onto it, casually holds it up. No big deal to Vance Honeycutt. Yeah. He's done this before. Tar Heels have really been hitting the ball well. They've scored 49 runs in the last three games, and they'll be at home a bunch here over the next couple days. They are hosting North Carolina A&T today on Tuesday. Then they'll be hosting Duke for a three-game series. That's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series coming up this weekend. So looking forward to seeing the Diamond Heels in Boschmer Stadium. They're now 15-5 and five overall, 2-2 two and two in ACC play again. They were unable to finish that full series against Pittsburgh due to weather. All right, let's go to some action on the courts. We'll start with men's tennis, 12 and 5, 4 and 1 in conference play. They suffered their first loss of the season as far as ACC action on the road against Virginia on Friday. They were down a couple players, including our friend Brian Cernock uh, in that particular match. But then Adam bounced back on Sunday and got a pretty dominant victory over Virginia Tech. Got a 6-1 win over the Hokies. Cernot comes back, wins a three-setter at number one singles to help the Tar Heels get that win. They'll go back on the road this weekend. They're at Georgia Tech and they're at Clemson before they come home to hopefully open up the yeah. renovated Cone Kenfield Tennis Center. Not this weekend, but next weekend. As you heard Brian say on here uh, last week, it's supposed to be a spectacular venue for fans and for players. All right, let's go to the lacrosses. We'll start with the men. They split a weekend set of games. They lost to number four Duke earlier in the first game of the weekend, but then bounced back and crushed Dartmouth on Sunday, 25-7. The final score that victory for head coach Joe Bresci was number 150 as the Carolina head coach. So congratulations to Coach Bresci. The guys now five and three, one and one in ACC action. They host High Point seven o'clock on Wednesday night. The women saw their long streak of success come to a close with a difficult loss. When you play the best and play them on the road, sometimes that happens. They were at number three, Northwestern. They lost 13 to nine. That stops a streak of 29 consecutive wins, 47 straight regular season wins. And Adam, as we've said a couple times in talking about the women's lacrosse team who are now seven and one and still undefeated in conference play, Younger team, they replaced some pieces from a year ago. You go on the road, you lose one to number three team in the country. Certainly, Jenny Levy and her squad will learn from that one. That was a weird match. Had to play indoors at Northwestern's football training facility, so some weird things facility-wise. Got the chance to talk to Jenny Levy about that, and she said she thinks playing that type of competition in that environment and those circumstances will make the Tar Heels a lot better later this season. We know Jenny Levy knows how to use things like that as motivation with her squad moving forward. Next chance for them to take a step forward comes up Thursday at Dorrance Stadium. They also host High Point again on Thursday. Let's wrap things up by mentioning gymnastics. They finish in third place at the Eagle Championships. Had a couple individual champions in that event. Lolly Dekanoidza and the Bars. And she was also the Eagle Coast Specialist of the Year. Julia Noer was in a three-way title on the floor. And the women did indeed qualify for the NCAA regional round. They'll be heading out to Denver for that. It is the second consecutive year that they have qualified for the regional. So congratulations to head coach Dana Durante and her team. And congratulations to you. You made it all the way through. Thanks for joining us here on the Carolina Insider.